So quite a few of us right now are looking at downsizing. Downsizing for different reasons, but nonetheless downsizing. What I would like to talk about is what exactly is downsizing and why are so many people interested right now in the whole craze. Downsizing literally means to reduce in size. So if you think about it, like now our kids, we are in the empty nester phase. All three of our beautiful, wonderful children are off doing amazing things and we're very grateful, but now we have this four bedroom house, we have a big yard, lots to do, and we're thinking we're about done with this phase. So basically what we'd like to do and what a lot of people are doing right now is we're moving to where we have, have something a little bit more manageable. So at this point in our life, we can also do other things. So we would like less square footage. We would like no more stairs, less home maintenance, less yard work, just kind of a simpler life. So that's what we're looking for. And I know a lot of other people are as well. And I found this interesting fact because I used to be a teacher and I'm all about the research. And actually the US Census Bureau states that come 2035, the senior population is gonna outnumber the under 18 population for the first time in history. So think about that for just a moment. That's pretty amazing. Motivation to downsize usually stems from different things. For us, it's being empty nesters. We're ready to, to move to something a little bit less um, enormous and something that's better for our life right now. But it could be other types of changing events too. Um, when people go through a divorce or if there's a death in the family, if you were in some type of accident and you have a bad back and the home that you're currently in it has a lot of stairs and a lot of yard work and things like that. So now we want more of a rambler. We want something with less uh, maintenance and upkeep. Maybe you are retiring, getting close to retiring. And when we retire, we want to downsize our home so we can upsize our life because you know what? We have earned it. We have worked hard for a lot of years and the things that we want to do now is not spend all of our weekends doing the yard work and taking care of things around the home, especially when there's a lot of space in the home that we are not using. So the problem with this phase of life, uh, whatever it is, for whatever your reason for wanting to move, sell your home, downsize, whatever else, it can feel super overwhelming. There's so much to do that we kind of get that analysis paralysis. You know, you've, you've been here so long, you've got so much stuff. It's such an enormous task to think about moving, to think about doing all the things. So I thought what I would do is help break it down into some simpler chunks. We just take like, what do they say? How do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. I do not eat elephants, but anyway. Um, so just some little bite-sized chunks. When you are ready to downsize, you can start doing some things now. So even if you're not ready to sell, but you know what? You're just starting to think. Perhaps in two, three years, we're gonna be ready to sell. Retirement's right around the corner. Um, just just different life experiences or things that may happen. So you're just kinda, it's, it's in the back of your mind right now. Well, a huge help that you can start working on right now is starting with decluttering. So it's a great step, no matter how long you've lived in your home, and it's, it's very um, freeing. So you can start one room at a time. You can do one thing, you can start with your pantry. Look for old food, things like that that you don't use, and maybe organize it. Get some cool little containers. I love organizing. It it's, it's, feels so good to me. You can look through, um, if you are empty nesters as well, maybe go up in the attic. Do you have boxes of stuffed animals and baby clothes and things like that that your kids really don't want? Um, if you have in your neighborhood, I want you to look on uh, Facebook. If you do Facebook, there's buy nothing groups and buy nothing groups are all over the country and it's usually within like a five mile radius of your home. So like my small town has five or six different buy nothing groups and it's great. So what it is, is when people are ready to give things away, you can give it to people in your neighborhood that may be in need instead of having to go even to a donation center. Um, it can be something like every time I clear out my garden, right now it's zucchini season, so I'm having an explosion of zucchinis and cucumbers and things like that. 
too much for my husband and I to eat by ourselves. So I just, you know, put on by nothing. Hey, I've got, you know, three zucchini and two cucumbers, something like that. And people want them. Um, clothes. You know, a great thing on Buy Nothing is uh, baby items or kid items. You know how quick our kids outgrow things and it's turned into almost like the share thing. So now we gift it to somebody that can use it and then when they're done with it, they can gift it to somebody else and it's a great thing. Anyway, it's called Buy Nothing. That is one thing I have really used to help declutter our home. You can only change kids' bedrooms into so many things, a gym, an office, things like that, right? So start with the closet. Look through your clothes. What are the things you have not worn in over a year and really have no intention of wearing again? Um, that's a good place to start. Go in your garage. Look how many old paint cans you have, oil, things like that. Wait and, and do a little research and find a recycle event that may be coming up that takes those type of items. Um, you've got old sports equipment, old, you know, hunting equipment, car equipment, tools, things like that. And then you can move in, like I said, one room at a time. Cleaning out my kitchen cabinets was like the most freeing thing. There's all these old appliances or new appliances that were never used. And I gift them to people that will use them. Uh, and if you, if you, if it's really nice or it's brand new, sell it, sell it on offer up, sell it on Craigslist, sell it, you know, somewhere at a garage sale, whatever. Uh, but it opens up so much space and it makes you feel so, um, organized and accomplished to have spaces get cleaned out just room by room. Some of the other things you may want to do for empty nesters, especially maybe it's time you want to do a little more travel. Well, it's hard to travel when you have a yard that overgrows when you're gone, right? Um, so you want to look for something maybe a little bit smaller. Maybe you want to do some RVing. That is great. Maybe you want to um, rent for a year until you figure out what your next steps are. You want to go ahead and sell right now while well, we have a hot market, right? A good seller's market and you want to rent for a little bit. Uh, maybe you want to move to a 55 and up community, something like that, where you don't have kids running all around the neighborhood. I love kids. I used to be a teacher, uh, but it's, you know, it's nice to have people that are at your same point in life, kind of surrounded with that. So here's what I want you to take a moment and think about. What would your dream life look like? What would it look like if you had extra time and extra money? What would you be doing right now, honestly? And think about that, like start creating that, whether you are a visual person and you wanna create a vision board, I like doing those, but I'm a very visual person. If you wanna make lists, if you wanna think about like what would your lifestyle look like at this point in your life, whatever the life change is that makes you wanna consider downsizing or moving or selling or whatever it is, and then when you're, when you're going through that decision-making process, look around your current home. How much extra space do you have that you really don't use? Um, how much home maintenance time do you spend weekly? Whether it's uh, you know fixing things that are starting to, to wear out if you've been in your home for a while. Uh, how much time do you spend on repairs, cleaning, overall just home care? Uh, washing windows, right? How many hours a week do you spend on your yard? I like to garden, so I've also got the garden maintenance. We have COVID chickens now, so we've got a little, you know, suburbia farm kind of going on. So there, there's a lot of extra maintenance that goes on with that. But also with your yard, you got to think about, you know, your gutters, um, weeding. How long does it take you to do those type of things? It's mowing your yard. Is it something you enjoy? The garden is something I enjoy. Some people do not. So you need to be weighing those kind of options. What would you do if you had an extra 10 or 20 hours a week, ideally? What hobby? What would you go hiking? What is it that you like to do that if you didn't have so much to do at your house, you could be doing? What would you do if you had the extra money to pursue those things? Because right now, like I said, it is a very good time to sell. If that's something that's that you've possibly been thinking about, that's something you should maybe consider. Maybe it's more time to volunteer. Maybe you'd like to go to the gym every day and you don't feel like you have the time right now. Spend weekends, 
you know, taking adventures or, or doing things other than working on your house. So just some things to consider. Um, I, I'm sure I did not cover everything. If you have any questions about downsizing or the steps that you should possibly take to start getting ready for it, like I said, number one is the decluttering. So find yourself a good decluttering guide. You can watch some of my other videos that I have where there are some helpful tips. Um, you can go to my website, suzysunshine.com. There is a section on DIYs and decluttering, things that you can do, but that is a great first step. And then come back each week. I will have a new video each week on things that you can do when you're ready to buy or sell or any other real estate questions that you may have. Feel free to ask, feel free to uh, send me a message and I will get back to you as soon as I can. And have a lovely day.